Kia ora and welcome everyone. It's great to have you all on board for today's Markham interview. My name is Charles Curry and I'm part of the support team here in Napier NZ. And today we're going to visit Hayden Prestige, our sales and marketing manager, who is currently out and about. Kia ora, Hayden. Kia ora, Charles. Thanks for that. Trust you can hear me, see me okay out here. It's a beautiful day in Napier today, where I'm coming from. But um, yeah, pleased to be on this. It's a good, good, uh, these webinar sessions have been really good. Educational, short, sharp, but um, yeah, Kane, take it away. Awesome. Our core topic today is resist attacks. And what we're specifically talking about is resisting the internal chemical attack within the concrete. I'm going to be hitting Hayden with some questions around the issues he sees out in the field and the Markham systems and approach to these issues. We're then going to open the door to audience questions later in the presentation. So please feel free to use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen in the middle there. Uh, fire some questions as we go along and we'll come back to you a bit later on. Let's get the show on the road. Hey, we've talked in some of our previous webinars about the unplanned costs in maintaining concrete infrastructure. Are you able to give us some background and why the concrete often doesn't meet its planned design life? That, that's interesting way of looking at unplanned cost. It's, um, I guess, when when we're what we're seeing in, in the industry is, um, you know, we're planning these structures, we're designing these structures, and you know, it's the from a from a structural point of view that sound and, and the design's perfect you know the strength what it's what it's loading there what, what's going to be working on the structure what's the um you know flexural strength etc what's required of the structure itself what's often unplanned or not been looked at um in detail is what the environment or what the situations can throw at it so what the attack might be um, see, I'm close to the sea here at the moment, and, and that's chloride attack, that's salts. Um, you know, you might be fertilizer or you need know, acid attack, carbonation into car parks, these type of things. And that's often not been planned for, that level of protection, um, what's needed. And also through those stages, like we might, we might plan a good structure, um, good cover, plenty of concrete, good strength concrete. But what about the curing process, you know, and is it done right? And does it lead to um, things where you might get micro cracking and um, a, a series of events that might happen that hasn't been planned for that might lead to premature deterioration? Does that, does that make sense? It's more, the, I think from a structural point of view, it's well planned, well designed. Um, but what can the environment throw at it? You know, these attacks is probably what's been unplanned and that's probably not been looked at close enough. And um, interesting enough, the Australia Concrete Repair Association brought out a, um, a, a document recently, it's just on the screen now, but uh, basically in short, if you, if you see, spend a dollar um, in that planning stage of resisting attack or, or some preventative maintenance at that point, one dollar um, could result in a saving of $125 later down the track. You know, you move through your phases, you might get through to corrosion and you might end up having to rebuild that whole structure. So a dollar versus $125, obviously, um, yeah, take that out into into uh, millions or multi-millions as, as the structures are now. But um, yeah, if, if that makes sense, Charles. Yeah, that's massive. <clears throat> Thanks for that. Are you able to dig into that a little for us? How is the cracking a problem for durability? Yeah, so I mentioned that crack, you know, it's, it's concrete takes on, concrete takes on moisture, um, regardless, um, it needs to be protected, where cracking comes in as it accelerates that, so if we get things slightly wrong, um, either in the design or in the placement of concrete or in the curing of concrete, um, and it gets some cracking through the concrete, that accelerates that whole pr process of uh, letting moisture into the concrete, basically, if you, if you can stop moisture coming into the concrete, you're, you're, you're stopping 99% of concrete issues because the moisture brings in with it like um, chlorides or contaminants or um, acids or, you know, these, these things that attack and react inside the concrete and, and result in that corrosion cycle starting early and, like we say, premature deterioration. So it's that unplanned 
um, and it's not resisting the attack. So, yeah. So from a cracking point of view, it's it's really um, it's really just accelerating, allowing the moisture to get straight into the depth of steel. That's the level you want to protect, and um, so you want to want to stop getting through to there. Does that cover that? Yeah, so just so that I've understood, yes. Yeah, so what you're saying, there's bad reactions happening inside the concrete long before the deterioration is obvious. Is that correct? Have I got it yeah, right? it can, absolutely. It can happen like that. And um, in, the, in our industry, it's called, referred to often as concrete cancer. Now, hopefully um, that doesn't offend anyone on the call today, but if we can just look at it as an analogy, we've, I think we've all been close to someone with, cancer but um you think of that analogy of it is is um you know maybe working away inside and then all of a sudden it pops out on the surface or something becomes really obvious same with concrete you know you have corrosion cycle working away inside you can't see it you have moisture in there chlorides in there you'll have acid attack you'll have silica reactions going on then all of a sudden it pops out um it might be in like a big breakout some spalling might be in some rust staining all those type of scenarios. So yeah, it is um, it is something that we see a lot actually because you do a visual inspection of a project or a structure and it looks perfect on the surface. Dig a little bit deeper, take some tests at the level of steel, things like that. And you yeah, there's a big reactions going on that need protecting against. So yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, great. So if we paint a coating onto the surface, will that protect it? A painted coating, did you say? Yeah, if we paint a coating onto the surface, would that protect it? It will, it will protect concrete to a point. And I'd just like to emphasize to a point because um, a coating is, is a bit like putting um, a sticky plaster on a saw. You know, the, it's still acting inside there. All you're doing is protecting the surface. It's still, even it might be infecting and underneath there, it might, might be. Um, it might be working away and doing its damage underneath, but you're protecting the surface. Whereas that's okay from if it's a, um, you know, might stop stop new moisture coming in, things like that, or mud or dirt or whatever it is in a plaster scenario. But with with concrete, if you get uh, some sort of coating or, or painted surface, all it needs is some little, some wear or some um, gap that's missed and moisture can come straight back in there um, and it, you, it wears off over time. So a hardware in scenario like say a port structure or, or even a, a big tank where you've got running water, it will wear off the sides and before long you'll um, have to be recoating it and recoating it and recoating it. So it's like a maintenance thing. But um, one other thing with, with coatings is um, you, you've protected the surface, but inside the chlorides, the moisture, is not being immobilized, it's still working. And um, it's it's having to, it's still the corrosion cycles going on. So it's almost like you're sweating inside a, a, a rain jacket, that type of analogy. This, this slide's interesting. It probably might show up better what, what I'm referring to. Um, so this is now is looking right inside concrete. You can see your big gray um, aggregates there, the stones, and then the the lighter gray, that's like your calcium silica hydrate, that's your um, cement particles, and you know, that's the binder of your concrete. And then you see these blue blue roads or capillaries in there. Now, what they're from is when, when concrete's new, uh, only, um, only a portion of the water that's actually mixed in with the concrete at the start is used, is used and it bleeds back out. So it comes back out through the surface or, or underneath and it leaves these channels, it leaves these roads, it leaves these capillaries that need to be protected. And um, so, what it, so what I was saying, if you coated the top and you allowed, and moisture was still in there, it's still very active inside the concrete. Um, and also if you wear it again, you're just, um, you're just allowing opening up more, more channels. So does that make sense? Yeah, no, that does, <clears throat> sure does. So what is the best option? Like how do we get inside the concrete and protect it? Yeah, it's good. So, so Markham have utilized a lot of um, systems over the years, but one that's come really strong is our penetrating hydrogel system. 
So if you can just envisage that slide I was looking at earlier, being able to penetrate the concrete with a, with a product that goes in, reacts with the moisture and gels off to protect, to protect um, those pores, those capillaries. That's what we're doing with our hydrogel product. So you might have heard of us talking about Acron hydrogel or if anyone's been on earlier webinars. Um, that's what it's doing inside the concrete. It's going in there, but going in those capillaries, those pores and forming a hydrogel and that hydrogel protects moisture migration. So that's that's permanent right inside the concrete. It can't be worn off. Um, and and it's, it's, it mobilizes your chlorides. It mobilizes that attack, if you follow. Yeah, that's great. What sort of situations or projects is that best suit, Hayden? A uh, vast range of projects. Um, I mean, obviously we've talked a little bit about marine today. That's a big one. But then moving through into even like car park structures, we got carbonation, um, even just waterproofing of basements, that type of scenario might have contaminated soils. Wastewater is a big one, you know, with that acid attack. Um, fertilizer is, you know, the fertilizer attack, things like this. They're very harsh environments, even through to like aged care and where you get um, urine and things uh, getting into the concrete. So there's a whole range of pro um, projects really that and concrete in general does need protecting it um, it does need something to keep its design life yeah good so hydrogel treatments can also be used for reparation of structures as well is that right yeah so you mean like some repairs um, done and then protected is that what you're thinking yeah 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 so um, in, a, in a lot of structures that have got corrosion cycle started, the um, repairs may be needed. So often that is like a breakout repair, more concrete around it, things like that. But what, what happens with that, if it's not, um, if we haven't got to the core of the problem, what happens is um, you'll, get a, you'll get corrosion starting right beside where it was. So the patch might, might remain well, but because corrosion was already working inside that structure, inside that concrete, it will just break out beside it. And before long, it'll just keep moving. Now, if you're a, a repair contractor, that's brilliant because you get repair work running through, but as an asset manager or as a uh, designer, that's not what you want to see. So you, utilizing the penetrating hydrogels, you can, um, yeah, you can get into the core of the problem, protect it at that level, and you'll stop that um, breakout further on. So absolutely protect repairs, protect um, before you put the repair on, so the concrete underneath and your repair, and you'll have a, um, you'll have a long standing structure. Well, that's awesome. Excellent, thanks very much, Hayden. Appreciate you taking the time to help us understand that. And I can see how it would save a lot of time and money in the long term. We are now going to move to our question and answers. Uh, so it just looks like we've got a couple that have just come in. Um, the first one is, when do you apply the gel? What's the effect on concrete curing? Brilliant. That's a good question. I probably didn't cover that enough. So two ways of doing it. If you've got an existing structure, um, um, we can apply it to any age concrete. Now, just we just need to be access to the concrete. So we'll still get that depth of penetration. We'll still get that protection. Now, where it's where it's unique and where it's um, really beneficial to a project is applying as a cure. Because so as soon as the concrete's poured, uh, or a big tank floor or a um, precast panel, and that needs curing anyway. Um, water curing is like a benchmark, but practically it's not very possible on both sides now to get a decent water cure. So we use a hydrogel um, and it's, it, it sprays on and because it goes in and transforms that moisture to a hydrogel, it retains that moisture in the concrete and that's what you need to do to, um, for quality curing. And it keeps feeding the cement, it makes the concrete stronger and to last longer right from day one. So the performance of it's equal to a 14 day water cure and it's moisture retention. So that's 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 a good point. Thanks for asking that question. Oh, awesome. Um, the next one is how long is the standard warranty? 
That's good. Um, Markham is very project specific company. Every project is different. Every situation is different. Every um, environment is different. You know, you might take a wastewater scenario, a, a, just a waterproofing scenario or a chloride um, scenario. But in, on standard, we, we protect um, as a 25 year warranty as a standard warranty. And it's a performance warranty. And it might be around um, stopping um, chloride ingress or might be about water penetration or it might be around um, um, loss of cover, so, you know, measuring these sort of things. So, uh, but yeah, that's our standard warranty and it really only grows from there. Yeah, that's good, thank you. Uh, another one just coming now. Do you have any test results to confirm long-term durability performance of this product? Yes, absolutely. Um, if have asked that if they want to share some more information on what type of project or environment they're working on. But um, yes, absolutely. We do a lot around testing of our, of our solutions. And um, so right from penetration tests, chloride infusion tests, these sort of things. And ultimately, yeah, we can we can um, see what it, how it affects durability. But the main thing there really is stopping that moisture. Um, you're extending the, you're, you're making the, the um, structure more durable. Hopefully, uh, that's, a, that's a great question. If Feel free to email me after with some specifics on that and I'll need to um, help out there. Awesome, that's good. Well, it looks like we've just got one more. How often does it have to be reapplied? That's good. Good question. Sorry, I didn't touch on that earlier. So we touched on like a paint scenario or a coating scenario. We they pretty much have to be a maintenance contract. You have to keep doing it. Where where this um, Acron hydrogel is unique is once it's gone into the concrete, once it's transformed to a hydrogel, and it's working inside the concrete, you can't reverse it and you can't get rid of it. Um, so nothing else can break it down because really it's just um, creating more of the calcium silica hydrate and nothing's going to break that down. So it's really a permanent treatment. Um, we've done a lot of projects, you know, over, over 20 years um, that haven't need to be recoded. So it's, a, yeah, it'll last the, the length of the concrete structure. If that makes sense. Yep, that's, that's great. Uh, another one here, how how would you use this on existing water retaining structures? Existing water retaining, did it say? Yes, yep. Yeah, that's good because um, the, cool, the, the really neat thing about this is you can say you've got a live um, reservoir or drinking water or something like that, um, that you can't take it offline. Being, being able to penetrate the concrete so much um, you can, you can treat a structure from the outside or the inside, whatever way you say a basement scenario where you're retaining water from coming in. You can treat a wall from the inside and get that penetration and get that performance. From a tank scenario, you can um, you can um, treat it from the outside, and you know we might have some seepage, and you'll get that. So yeah, really good from a um, water retaining on existing. We, we do a lot of that. Um, combined with repairs that may may be needed, joints, etc., um, and then protecting the concrete itself. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, looks like we've got time for one more. How long has this product been around for, and have you got any example of its success in recent times? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we brought this product to uh, Australia, New Zealand, in in 1996. And we've been treating structures ever since that point. So there's a lot of lot of lot of track record um, on a vast range of uh, projects now. So we're treating around 150,000 square meters a month now, um, and that's across curing, sealing, um, and then we're talking car parks, tanks, walls, e e bridges, you know, everything concrete. So. Um, so yeah, huge, huge project range. If there was some specifics on that question, I'm happy to share some um, actual projects that may be in line with what you're working on. But yeah, absolutely. Jump on our projects page as well. Uh, on the website, you'll see 
some good history on there, the type of projects we get involved with. Yeah, that's great. Thanks very much, Hayden. Was there anything else you wanted to share with us before we close? No, that's good. Unless anyone's got any more questions, but no, it's been good. It's a good topic. Um, resisting the attack is, is always a good. Um, preventative maintenance, extending service life is our is our um, catchphrase, if you want, because we want to buy buy time. We don't want to see, you know, we're making the well actually more sustainable, not having to reuse more concrete, more new builds, etc. So, that's no, good. Yeah, that's so key. There is just one more come through. Um, do you undertake remediation works or just supply these products? No, we can. Uh, we'll be interested in looking at that. We don't. We work with teams um, closely associated with us, um, and we can yeah carry out whole repair work. So we do that on like um, big car park structures, wharf structures, jetties, um, tanks, um, tunnels is a big one. You know, we would need to get underneath. We've done a lot into the hydro sector, things like that. So. Yep, absolutely. Keen to look at that. Well, that's awesome. Well, that wraps up for today. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming on board. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great Brilliant. day. Thanks, all.